Why is it so hard to see a family doctor? I would start by saying I think we're facing a crisis in family medicine. I know we have solutions. We know what to do. We just have to, to go ahead and do it. But normally, do you take it once a day? No, no. When I go home, I'm never done. My day is never done. I don't think that patients understand the full picture of what we do behind the scenes. Which is why we're making an early morning house call. Good morning. Hi. How's it going, Laura? Good, you? I don't think we're waking you, are we? No. <laughs> we wanted to see why family doctors are disappearing and what can be done about it. We don't want to disturb you, just fly on the wall, but we're hoping to just follow you through your day. All right. Laura Sang's a new family doctor in saint Hippolyte, Quebec, north of Montreal. At 6.30, she's already working. I have 12 documents, two results, and four messages. And that's just overnight. And I'm just going through this person's uh, chart, which is quite lengthy. That was especially the appeal for me of uh, family medicine, was that you, you get to follow, you know, people over time for the rest of their lives. Sometimes, you know, you're giving wonderful news. Sometimes, you know, it's not good news. But either way, you're kind of that constant. On top of that, family doctors are essentially entrepreneurs. You heard that right. Doctors run small businesses. Many are only paid when they're with a patient. On average, it's about $40 per appointment or visit. That entails kind of when the person comes into my office, kind of keeping track of how long they were there, what sorts of things I did for them, um, what health conditions uh, and underlying things they have, because that does affect um, sort of how you're allowed to bill. Which means her workday hasn't actually started yet. While medical school prepared Sang to be a doctor, no one said much about renting office space, buying medical equipment, computer systems, along with hiring and paying staff. In the office, it's back to back to back patients. With medical issues ranging from lack of sleep and mental health challenges to infections and cancer. What I didn't expect was sort of all the other hats that I wear as a family doctor. I, I find myself sometimes being in the role more of psychologist because patients can't afford them. And sometimes it's been sort of pharmacists trying to do like a, a review of all their medications. I'm sort of the secretary in uh, figuring out, okay, which appointments that I've requested have been done, uh, which specialists have they seen, what are they still missing, what kinds of tests uh, do they still need to have. Dr. Sang is now several hours and several patients into her day, but it is lunchtime, but it looks like you're also still working. Yes, I have so many things to get done, so I usually just take a bite, keep typing, back and forth, and that's usually what my lunch hour looks like. And her day is far from over. A lot of people don't really know uh, the reality, and, and sometimes, you know, the reason that we don't have availability, it's like someone left the tap running, and depending on the week, it's all running all the way, or it's more of a yeah. slow trickle. But and it's overflowing. Never, but it's never off. There is no off. The Canadian Medical Association says burnout among family physicians has gone from 33% in 2017 to 57% in 2021, and it's getting worse. Surveys already show that one in five Canadians do not have a family doctor, but there are solutions. So where are we heading? So we're heading to Cambridge Delta Clinic, which has just hired a brand new physician who will be taking on new patients. Donna Gravel works for the city of Cambridge, Ontario, which has had a shortage of family doctors for years. She's a medical recruiter who knows what it takes to attract family doctors. We're hearing from family doctors saying they're under this incredible amount of pressure. They're running their own business with a ton of administration and overhead and trying to see patients. And it's a lot to manage. How has Cambridge dealt with some of those pressures? Well, I think because we've formed FOES, which are family health organizations, and we also have two family health teams. 
Instead of one doctor opening an office, several doctors work together and share overhead and expenses. They also work closely with a team of other professionals, pharmacists, social workers, nurses, dietitians, psychologists, and others offering direct access to care. And the more doctors there are in the group, the easier it is for each of them. If you are off for a week, you're sharing your after hours, and that really eases the pressures that they're not looking after their own patients 24 hours a day. So if they're in a group of four, they would be on call for their patients every four nights. Well, now we have 40 in the group, so it's one in 40. But these doctors also do need to make money. And what's the model here? So they get a stipend per year per patient that they have. And then they also bill for the services that they do when the patients come to see them. It's called capitation. Doctors like Laura Sang in Quebec get paid for every visit or a fee for service. But most family doctors in Cambridge get paid a set amount based on the number of patients they have. They get a higher amount for older patients and they can still bill for other services. Gravel drops off flowers for a new doctor she's recruited and leaves us with another doc she brought to Cambridge years ago. Makalai Kumanen is the new president of the Ontario College of Family Physicians. We know that fewer medical students are choosing family medicine as a specialty. I think we know that primary care has chronically been underfunded. She says burnout, fewer family medicine grads and an aging population are creating the perfect storm. And governments can easily embrace models like the ones being used in Cambridge. Ultimately, it's really recognizing how important we are as a sector, how important we are as a foundation to our healthcare system, and how we can build funding in to support that sector. In Quebec, Dr. Sang clocks out after 6 p.m., but her day isn't over. She hopes working in teams and better payment options will become the norm, but adds her patients are always her focus. Just seeing how appreciative my patients are and keeps me motivated to keep um, doing the job that I do and, and being there for them because that's ultimately why I'm here is to, to help people. There are cures for this crisis. Now provincial governments must decide on a treatment plan before more doctors leave family medicine. Christine Birak, CBC News, Saint-Hippolyte, Quebec.